Hello and welcome to some horrific weather here in the F-14. And I'm actually going to try and show everyone how to recover this aircraft in this weather. Uh, we can see we've got the wind tree set up so the uh, clouds and rain is no longer clouds and rain. But snow, that snow you've seen whizzing by the cockpit. And if we look down here, we are already quite low. But, um passing just below 3,000 feet and we really can't see anything and that's because of how foggy it is. So before I continue this what I'm going to do is come out of there back into the mission editor just to make sure everybody is on the same page. Now it is a tutorial on auto landing the F-14 but just in case for everyone else I've created a new mission. I've gone into the winter We've uh, and that allows for the snow. You know what we can even drop the temp down a little bit. I've got overcast and rain. I've left it default there, but I've enabled the fog. And we've got uh, thickness all the way up as high as it'll go with the visibility down to 2,000 and some feet, just so we can see something. I've placed down the F-14, left everything as default except for the skill level, which is player, to make sure that we fly it. And I've placed down the forest all. That's all I've done. So what I'm going to do, let's add some speed on there. Uh, there's no wind, so let's just give it something like uh, 20 knots default. We're going to press the add button and give a solitary waypoint over there just so that the ship's moving. We'll edit back to, we'll come back to waypoint zero, press the edit button like that, come over to the advanced options. We're going to press add and on perform task, we'll drop that down to perform command and on the actions menu, we'll activate the TACAN. I'm going to choose uh, 59 here. On the call sign, these are the three letters you will see. Can be any that you like. I'm going to choose um, FST, uh, trying to uh, abbreviate Forestall there. Make sure on the unit menu you drop that down to na uh, Naval 11 or whatever you've got it called up here. Then we'll press the Add button and on the command go back to ICLS. And I used to, I like to use the standard naming. Uh, convention which is the uh, last digit unless we're into the 70s and then I add one so in this case number nine on the unit we'll use naval and again for the name um, let's just call it uh, it doesn't really matter I'm going to call it uh, ILS uh, leave it at that okay so with that we'll have the ILS functional we'll have the TACAN functional and we'll expect to contact the uh, ship on 127.5 um, I'm not going to set up any settings in the F-14 because we may be doing this on a server or on somebody else's mission and we'll ask Jester to do that for us. Um, so let's jump back in. And first thing we're going to do when the game starts or the, the uh, mission, we'll ask Jester to A, tune the um, comms menu, B, tune the TACAN and then C, uh, the data link. Uh, so... Let's get on with that. I'll just turn it down just a tad. And I'm going to put the autopilot on just to hold. Let's zoom in a bit. Let's come. We spawn in 8 away. Let's change that to nav mode. And let's now ask uh, Jester on the menu here. I'm going to come over to the nav. Um, Takan. Tune Takan. And Forestall. If you don't see it there, you've not done something right in the mission editor or whoever did make the mission didn't do something right. Let's also just click that off to give us levels a bit more view. While he's tuning um, that in, let's also ask him on the radio menu uh, to do the same also. Okay. And we can see that taking place there. And then last but not least, once more, come over to the data link option, set host and the ship so there we have it. We've got the TACAN for the navigation. We've got the data link and the radio communication. I'm just going to make a solitary call out to the ship to say that we're coming. And after that, I'm going to focus on the auto land. Uh, we can sort of see some hills coming in the uh, fog there. So I'm going to disconnect the uh, autopilot and come over to the left. Which would be west. Let's uh, head uh, 270. And first things first, let's hit up the ship. It's on COM2. Let's press ATC, Forestall, and inbound. Marshall 
I'm also going to put this into Takan mode real quick. And what I'm interested in here is the expected final bearing, which is 247 as well as the altimeter. So let's remember 247. And I'm going to spin this one round after ensuring that we've got nav mode in and Takan 247. Next thing I'm going to do is tune in the pressure. Now, I don't know why he says 2992, uh, 2993 when we leave it at default 2992. But regardless, let's just uh, spin that over to 2993. And so with that done, let's have a look what we've got. Here, now we've got the Takan tune in, we've got an arrow pointing towards the ship. We see that here. It's currently around 230 degrees for around 14 miles maybe 13 and a half and we see that repeated here we've got the little triangle pointing towards the ship and if we look over the stick here we see we've got a straight line this isn't the direction towards the ship but rather the brc which if you remember we were given is 247 degrees so this is the actual sh the, the actual heading that the ship itself is traveling not uh, the direction towards the ship which is now over here so what we're going to do is set ourselves up behind the ship. So how do we do that? Well, we know that the ship's heading 247, which is this way. And so behind the ship would be over here. About something like 6 or 67 uh, degrees, something like that. The reciprocal of 247. So what we're going to do is head over to the left, uh, further behind the ship. And if you can imagine the ship currently being, I'll tell you, we'll see when we're heading towards it. I'll mention it once that triangle passes our 12 o'clock. I'll add a little bit of power. So the ship's right in front of us now. But in order to get behind the ship, remember, we don't fly to the tail end of this because this is the way the ship's heading. Because we want to get behind the ship with respect to the way that the ship's heading. So I'm going to fly with it on the side for a little while. Until these two more or less match. Just keeping one eye on the altimeter seeing as we can't see the ground. So the ship is currently on our th uh, 3 o'clock position. Now we see that arrow pointing towards the middle. Once that crosses the center, which is about to happen right now, we're directly in line behind the ship with respect to the direction of the ship. And now we've passed through the other side, which is fine. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut the throttle out and set ourselves up for approach. So we want to be in line with there again. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to change the nav mode to landing mode. And I'm not going to bother with ATC. We're just going to focus on landing at this point. I'm going to make this 270 spin. You see we're around 10 nautical miles away from the ship. I certainly don't want to be any closer. If you remember, there's around a 3 to 1 rule with respect to the descent, which would mean at 3 miles you want to be 1,000 feet up. Or said another way, at 3,000 feet you want to be around 9 miles away, maybe even 10 so we're going to try and follow that rule. I don't want to get too much further away from the ship because there were those hills, if you remember, the mountains. After all, we are not too far away from the mountains at the Caucasus. So let's um, continue turning left now. I'm going to head something like 0, 040 0 degrees. Let's level it off there. So the ship is over here, but the heading of the ship. So we've got a ways to go to get back in line. We're around 14 miles away from the ship. Do you know what? When that says 15, I'm going to put the heading of the ship, which is also repeated here, on my 3-9 line. In this case, it will be my 9 o'clock. And that way, I will maintain my distance of around 15 nautical miles. So there we see at 14.9, there's 15 we get that arrow on our nine line right about there 
that's now going to stay. We see it's at 15.1. It's, it's not going to get any further than that. I'm also going to descend uh, down to 3,000 feet. We're currently at 3,700. Keep turning left. Keep that on the 399. We're about to intercept in line with the back of the ship. We see the arrows there. Here's the alignment of the ship. And we'll see that line on the uh, top screen as well. Head towards the center when that begins to happen. As soon as we, as soon as that happens, I'm going to make a sharp left turn and head straight towards that arrow. Don't want to head too much closer to the ship, but not too much further away. We're very close to 3,000 feet now. I'm just going to give a tiny bit of power. Um, I don't mind um, being slow, but I don't want to get too much lower. And there's the arrow we see heading towards the center. So let's turn left and head straight towards the ship. And see if we can keep that arrow more or less centered. Things are going to happen quite quick now. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll uh, try and fly slow. And if need be, I'll live pause it. A few degrees left to go. I'm going to pop my uh, autopilot uh, hold on. And I'm now going to press uh, also my altitude uh, hold. Did they fix that? Seems not. Okay, so I'll just put the uh, autopilot on. There we have it. That'll do 2,700 feet. So this line is coming up. Once we're within five degrees, we should see it move across on here as well. So let's just uh, swing to the right a little bit just to make that process happen a little quicker. We see we're 12 miles away. I definitely don't want to get closer than 10 until this process is complete. Wow, they really did change the flight model on the... Uh, F-14, so now we're within 5 degrees. We now see it swinging across there as well. So at this point, with landing mode in, I'm going to press this middle one, which is for the all-weather landing, the AWL. So let's switch that. And now, providing we've got the correct TACAN, which we did, we asked Jester to tune the TACAN, as well as the data link, we should see this cross here. This is the ILS. Now remember, if you're behind the ship, the uh, landing deck is slightly off angle. That is why even though we're more or less in line here, this line here is to the right. You can also see we're slightly below the glide slope, which is fine. At this point, I'm going to drop the gear down. I'm going to drop the hook. I'm going to pull back on the stick to make sure we don't lose any more height. We're at 2,000 feet. That's low enough. Pull back, pull back, add a bit of power. Pull, pull, pull. I'm also now going to deploy the flaps. There we go. So we've got flaps out, gear down, hook down. At this point, we're configured for landing. And I'm going to ask the autopilot to take over the auto throttle just to release my workload some. So with the engines joined together, there's auto throttle on. Autopilot's got it. I'm now going to focus on getting in line with this cross. So if the uh, horizontal line is above, I'm going to climb. If it's too, if it's below, I'm going to push down. The vertical line is our left to right. Now remember, this is the direction to the ship. So I'm focusing on this for the direction, but this line to see if I'm in line with the runway. We're now seven miles away. I'm going to reactivate the autopilot, but keep flying it manually. So I'm going to press the autopilot on switch and keep flying it by myself. And at this point, I'm going to switch this switch over to the uh, automatic landing mode. So if we watch the switch, we see it pull back. And now we see these additional lights have come on. Not yet all of them. I'm going to point, uh, try and correct this as best I can. You've got the best chance with the auto land if you give it a decent setup to begin with. So a little low. Let's point back towards the ship. There we have it. Roll it off. Still a little bit low. As soon as we see these additional lights come on, we can press the nose wheel steering button and hope that the autopilot lands. I'm also at this point going to press the DLC switch, which is there, which is also the uh, flap button. And uh, pull back a little bit. 
I'm also going to trim back just a tad. PLC will, of course, uh, dump your lift as the spoilers do. Don't chase these lines too much. Remember those arrows on the, uh, on the, uh, I guess they called it a HSI back then as well. Uh, show the direction to the boat. You're steering left and right relative to this arrow, not this line here. This isn't a, uh, like in the more modern ones, which shows you the direction to steer. It's just showing you, are you in line or not? So we're now 4.5 miles away. I expect these lights to come on any moment in time. And as soon as they do, I'm going to press my nose wheel steering switch, providing that I've given the autopilot a decent setup to begin with. There we have it. They're all on now. So I'm going to press nose wheel steering. And autopilot has now got it. So it's got auto throttle, auto land. You'll see the stick spazzing around as well as the throttle up, down, up, down. And... If I zoom in a bit, we've got all these four. It's not very bright, but it's bright enough to see. Looks like he's got us on the glide slope and on the localizer, which we see. A line pretty much lined up behind the ship. We're coming in. We're three miles away. We're at that 1,000 foot. So the height checks ballpark figure. Let's have another look. Still don't see anything. It's really thick fog. We can see that the work that Eagle Dynamics has got to finish, which... Looks promising where the fog and the sky doesn't quite marry up when it's thick. But he, despite that, we certainly can't see the ship yet. We're relying completely on the electronics at this moment in time. Um, I'm not exactly sure how well the Autoland will go. We're, we're too heavy. I, I should have really dumped some fuel or started us off with a lower fuel load. But we don't have any weapons, so let's see. If we look on the... Uh, DLC, you actually see that the Autoland does flicker them up and down. You see it's flickering up and down. So the Autoland does actually make some use of the DLC. 1.2 nautical miles at this moment in time. I'm going to put my hands on the controls. I've got my finger ready on the autopilot disconnect. If something goes horribly wrong, I'm getting ready to take over. Speed looks good. We've got the donut. We're still on and on. We're heading towards the ship still. And the radio L is starting to unwind. I'm looking out the front. Starting to see something in the fog there. Looking a bit low, but you know what? We got a trap. Well done, autopilot. Well done. So there we have it. We've got a complete auto land in the uh, bad weather. I'm going to bring the hook up at this point. It did come in, did seem to be limping in a little low over the back of the ship, didn't it? But whether it's a one wire or not, I wouldn't have thought most people could do much better when it's this kind of fog. Oh, um, let's get rid of these uh, spoilers. Oh, not the fuel one, sorry. This one. Go on, wings, go away, fold away. There we go. And while the wings complete their folding, look at the rain drops on the canopy. Nice. We have successfully completed our landing on the forest stall in the worst fog. Let's take that away and um, I'll look for a screenshot now. And with that, we've got the. Uh, end of the video so you know something like i don't know recovering like that look at that wow zoom in a little bit try not and get the look at that the sky just ruins it but there we go auto landing that that there is the screenshot and with that is the end of the lesson so i hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something if not at least found it entertaining until next time take care bye bye